Hey guys, it's Russell back and on today's video I am going to show you how to make a massive improvement on your GMT 400 truck. Now if you're not familiar with what that is, that is the 88 to 98 uh, GM, Chevrolet, GMC, pickups, Suburbans, Tahoes, etc, etc. The problem with those trucks, even when they were brand new from the factory, is they had a very spongy pedal and a very long travel throw pedal, which basically results into brake performance that is less than stellar. Now put a 15, 20, 30 years on those trucks and it becomes worse. So if you've been following the videos that we've been doing on the 89 Chevy K1500, you know that I've replaced the master cylinder, the calipers, the rotors, the pads, the rear brake shoes, the rear brake drums, and the rear brake cylinders, along with the uh, soft brake lines. I did all that, and I took the rear anti-lock brakes out of the loop and bypassed the dump valve. Now doing all that made at least a 50% improvement on the brake performance as far as the pedal feel. Now it doesn't do anything for the long travel stroke on the actual brake pedal itself, which is one of the things we're gonna to address today. So how do you do this? Well, it's very, actually very simple. Thank goodness General Motors and their quest to cut costs oftentimes will make new style parts uh, pretty much the same design as far as mounting as old style. So when you hear of the word OBS or old body style, that's the GMT 400 trucks that we're talking about. And when you hear NBS, new body style, that is the trucks that have um, the updated like 2000, 2001, 2 and, and so on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the master cylinder from a 2002 Chevy Silverado half ton four wheel drive and we're going to mount it to our truck here. And supposedly this is one of the absolute best modifications you can do to make this kind, this generation truck feel like a brand new one. This is surprisingly easy. In fact, I believe it's easier on the 88, 89, 90, 91s or so. Uh, you'll see when you see the configurations of the brake lines. It'll bolt right up and we have to use one adapter and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. All right, so basically I'm gonna show you this. This is the part number. I got this from AutoZone. It's an NM4073. That's the master cylinder. It comes with a bleeder kit. And you will also need this right here. This is an AGF. It's a BLF-26C. Now here is the factory type st or style master cylinder. Now if you'll notice, it has a very, when you see the other one, it's got a very small bore and the stroke is a little different. This right here is a half inch dash 20 thread this right here is a 9 16 18 thread. When we take out our master cylinder, both of these are half inch dash 20 threads. And yes, it will bolt right up. The bolt pattern on the end is the same. So what we're going to need to do is we will take this adapter right here and we will uh, be able to run this 9 16 into a half inch dash, tw dash 20. That's it. Now if you have a later model, like say 95, 6, 7, things like that, you may have the full anti-lock brake. You may just have, this just has rear anti-lock from the factory. Uh, here's the dump valve that no longer is um, used in this because I have disabled the anti-lock brakes. I basically ran, I ran the lines from the master cylinder into the proportioning valve and then out. Okay, it doesn't go through the dump valve anymore. It's not necessary. This right here is a huge problem for these trucks to make this the pedal feel really squishy uh, and it does help a lot. So let's uh, get right to this and let me show you how we're going to do this. All right, so I'm taking the lines loose first. 
I, uh, this is 9 16 head on both sides. Please use a line wrench when you do this. I've, I've also got the uh, pig pad underneath there to catch the brake fluid that's going to dribble out. All right, so I've got an extension, 15 millimeter uh, deep wall. And we're going to loosen the master cylinder. So that's loose, so I'll move this dump valve assembly down, and then uh, here's our master cylinder. All right, so here's what I've done. I spent the last three hours trying to find a fitting, and let me tell you what happened. The fitting that was in the package was the wrong fitting. Uh, it was labeled correctly, but somebody uh, <laughs> put the wrong fitting in there. So I went to seven different parts stores, and I actually took this master cylinder and these two brake lines with me. And the very last one I went to, Advanced Auto Parts, uh, I found one that fit, and I looked at the package. I'm like, that's the same exact part number. So make sure, make sure that what you're getting in the package is what is on the label. Anyway, so I went ahead and basically I've uh, attached the master cylinder to the booster and that's gonna stay there and I've had to, I just had to bend the line here just a hair bit and this one. So I'm going to set everything up now to bleed the master cylinder. We're gonna bleed it on the truck and I'm gonna show you how next. All right, so I'm gonna take the little uh, adapters that come in the kit. Just gonna screw those in there like this. Now whether you do this on the truck or you do it on the in a vise, I just don't wanna have to take this off again. And there are two clear hoses that will attach to each of the nipples here. And then these just go inside the master cylinder. They don't go in there very far. Well, yeah, they do. I guess that's all right. All right, so I'm going to go get some brake fluid and we'll fill this up. Now, this master cylinder took an entire liter and it's all the way up to the max so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the truck and hopefully you guys can see this fine I'm going to go inside the truck and I'm very very gently going to depress the pedal make sure this I've already got let me see if you guys can see this already bubbles coming out All right, so I'm gonna continue this procedure until there's absolutely no bubbles on either the down or the upstroke. All right, so bleeding is complete when there's absolutely 100% no more bubbles in here whatsoever. 
if you have any bubbles in there I don't care how tiny it took me probably about 40 pumps to get this bled perfectly but there are absolutely no bubbles in there because you don't want them going into your brake lines you're already going to have some air in there just from um, this procedure now here's where it'll get a little messy um, we're going to I think I'll do this side first since it's got the adapter and I'm going to uh, remove let's see take this out I'll take this tube out just set it down there see this is already leaking out so we have to work rather quickly Alright, so I have gotten uh, all the lines on, I've gotten them tightened, them up, tightened up, and I went ahead and sprayed brake parts cleaner and everything to um, make sure everything's nice and dry. And the next step that I'm going to do is that we're going to bleed each wheel. Alright, so generally when I'm bleeding brakes, I like to do both axles are same, two at a time. Alright, so I'm going to open this one up and I do what's called gravity bleeding all right so I'll open the other one let me open this one now there's going to be quite a bit of air just from the hose but I'm going to uh, give the pedal just a little bit of uh, pressure to get it started. Okay, so you're gonna start seeing some bubbles. I, I couldn't see from the driver's seat until I edit this video. Let me make sure the master cylinder's full. All right, so this is the uh, next day from when I did the, uh, the job that you just watched with the upgraded master cylinder. And I've got to tell you something, you will be doing yourself a disservice if you don't do this. This is no joke. The brakes feel like a, 2000, a brand new 2021 vehicle. Yeah, they're that good. I didn't... Now, I thought it was going to make a difference, but I did not realize how big of a difference. That pedal has about an uh, inch and a half of travel before it really starts kicking in. Completely, totally different from what it was, just from that one thing. Now, I ran out of time gravity bleeding because it was getting dark, so I had my neighbor come over and we pressure bled it. Oh my goodness, he was even amazed. Yeah, he was amazed. He could not believe because he's driven 
all kinds of these Chevy trucks like this, and he knows how bad the brakes uh, feel, how bad the pedal feels on it. Just unbelievable. Listen, you've got to do this upgrade. If you don't do anything else, do this upgrade. You don't need to put on rear disc brake kit or you know, expensive, super expensive pads and rotors and all that. You will have so much pressure coming out of that master cylinder. It's unbelievable. Can you tell I like it? So anyway, it is so nice not to have a spongy pedal. Well, I didn't really have a spongy pedal. It was just really long throw and yeah. So go back and look at the other videos that I did on everything pertaining to the brake system and do this final thing and you will not regret it. So guys, I will see you on the next video.